well, it's been a while since I've done a blog, so I thought I'd sit down and tell you the story about my last year's fishing. Um, the place I chose to fish is called Aquatels, and the history of it is in the 80s it was stocked with carp. It was dug to um, be a drainage ditch for the whole of Basildon Town in Essex, and it's about 25 acres. It was stocked with carp, and it was quite popular back then. You used to get a lot of guys travelling from all around the country to fish it because it had 20 pounders in it. But to me and my friends, it was way out of our um, skill set, you know, it was 25 acres, normally choked with weed. So the only time we'd go up there was in the close season to feed the fish. And uh, it probably took me a few years to get the courage to go up there and fish for these carp. Uh, the first year I went up there was 1987. Having spent the whole close season feeding these carp go cat and seeing 20 pounders take it, you know, I was buzzing. I thought, I'm just going to turn up June the 20th, flick a load of go cat out, and I'll catch a 20 pounder straight away. But like car par, it come June the 16th when the season opened, no one saw a fish anywhere. So I spent the whole day on the 20th firing this go cat out to, you know, nothing was going to happen. I was just on the verge of giving up when I heard this sucking noise in the weed. I've looked down and there's a nose coming through the weed. I quickly squeezed a bit of bread around a size six super specialist, lowered it in on the nose and it come up and took it straight away. There was a big explosion as I struck the rod and it stripped about 30 yards of line off me. Definitely the most powerful fish I'd hooked at the time. And he's up wading out and netting a big ball of weed. And in that ball of weed was my first 20 pounder, 21 pound mirror. And my love affair with this lake began. Well, over the next few years, I spent as much of my spare time as I could fishing aquatels and eventually managed to catch a fish known as the pig, which was a lovely little Italian mirror of 23 pound and the biggest carp in the lake at the time. And I remember catching that and being absolutely over the moon. Again, off the surface, I used to love a bit of stalking. And uh, yeah, I was totally obsessed with carp fishing by this point. I'm in my late teens. It was around this time I started fishing with Mark Rush, who's one of my best mates. And me and Mark teamed up the next season, rolling bait continuously in his mum's kitchen and getting told off for it, and pre-baiting the lake. And over the next two seasons, we pretty much caught 95% of what swam in that lake and loved everything about it. It was around this time that um, a local shop managed to get a pool on the side of the lake and they isolated it it was about two acres and they stocked about a thousand ghost carp in there and they obviously had spring verema on them and it caused a catastrophic fish kill which was a nightmare for us because we had lost our fishing overnight and we was pulling out these carp that we just spent the last few years catching and loving and then um, burying them because they were just dying there was quite a few survivors at the time we was convinced that it killed everything but there was still quite a few fish um, that were left over but between Mark and me and a few of the local lads, we went to the lakes in the area that you couldn't fish and we restocked the lake with about another hundred fish. And over the years, they've come to grow quite big. Now it's had a few owners. There was one guy called Tony Prowl, lovely fella. He took over it and run it really well for a few years and ended up buying 65 AJS fish that were a mix between the orchard and horseshoe strain. Absolutely beautiful carp. Unfortunately, um, Tony ended up dying of a heart attack. Really nice fella, I was gutted when he died. And the lake um, sort of went not to rack and ruin, but it was just left to the water sports again, because there's always been water sports on there of some sort, whether it be windsurfing, power boats, jet skiing, there's always been something. But these days you've got wakeboards. Now a guy that runs it now, his name's Barry, lovely fella. He calls it Lens Paul. Um, he started running it. And I started noticing, this is now 35 years on from when everything happened. I've gone off and fished all round the world, all round England. And um, I started to see a few pictures of the fish in the lake. There was one particular fish, a mirror. Typical old school looking, rounded off fins, hardly any scales on it, big plain flanks, really lovely carp. And I wanted to catch it. Um, I knew somewhere it would be in a shoe box in my old albums. I would have definitely have caught it. And eventually I did find it at eight pound. But I wanted to go back and try and catch this fish. Now, 
to catch a 40 pounder out of the area that I grew up in where there was never a 40 pounder would be something you know so I asked Barry for a ticket and it took about three years to get one because there's only 35 members you can't fish normal hours so basically Monday and Tuesday are a maintenance day on the lake for the ski line so they look after all the lake and the jumps so they were the only days you could fish other than that you can set up when the skis come off which is normally around eight o'clock at night and you've got to be off by seven or eight o'clock in the morning so fishing between the um, skis could be quite difficult and i think this put a lot of local anglers off so this year when i was finally offered the ticket i took it with both hands so uh, let's look at what happened on my first session First take on the ski lake, first day, 33 pound mirror and an absolute corker. What a start. <laughs> Didn't expect to get off the ground this quick, but thank you very much. came back to the ski lake because some of them old car that were here when I was a teenager they're still here <laughs> and uh, here's one of them I'm 50 this year the last time I saw this car I think I was about 21 years old <laughs> what a lovely old relic tiny little melted fins 32 pounds, been here absolutely years. Well chuffed. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> what I should tell you about the lake is it, it isn't a normal fishing situation. When you've got wakeboards, you've got a wire that pulls the wakeboards around the lake. And this wire at Aquatels is running right way around the whole lake, 18 to 20 foot off the water. There's no casting whatsoever. If you cast out and uh, you go over these lines, you could actually ruin the whole fishing syndicate. So anything under the line would have to be done by a bait boat. But if you was fishing the margins, then obviously you could underarm cast or cast short. But going over the lines was a probably an instant ban to the lake. So you had to have a bait boat with you at all times. Now, I don't really love or hate bait boats. They're, I think they're good in the situations that you have to use them and this is a situation that you definitely have to use a bait boat in. So on my first session I'd caught the fish off a swim known as the island and it is what it says, it's an island with two walkways to it so you have to literally barrel up onto the island and fish off of the island. It's an excellent swim that offers a load of water in front of it, it's got shallows, deep water but um, the only problem with this, you have to book it. And with there only being fishing on a Monday and a Tuesday, you could often, you know, miss the booking for it. So I decided to target an area called the Back Strait. And now the Back Strait's got a lot of shallow water in front of it, probably two and a half to three foot, hard clay areas. So what I was doing was fishing a uni lead clip, about two and a half foot of rock bottom tubing. And then I was using a Ronnie rig with a soft boom. The soft boom again, was the Camo X in 25 and the hooks were a size four medium curve because they're nice and big and it tended to put off the bream and the tension, things like that. So I started to do really well off of this back straight. And over the next course of the next three weeks, I caught some absolutely stunning carp.
day, so it's not a big one, but it is one of the originals, or one of the older fish in the lake. Weed hanging off of everything. There we go. <laughs> and you can tell, because there's no scales on them. Here you go. Where are you? Come on, behave. Here you go. Probably about 22, 23 pound. Old as eels. They get back. off in a minute so before I leave get a little bit more bait in baiting under this arm and I can actually cast to here it's like 21 wraps and you're fishing up the front side of here only problem is you do have to book the island swim so you're not always guaranteed it but everyone else tends to sort of fish out so um hopefully get left alone. Okay, chucking around the way. Our mainline hybrid. I've been using this and the cell on here. Just out there. That's it, it's the one. Keep that area fed, they'll keep coming back. Remember you're feeding an enormous amount of bream and tench as well. So I'm probably using a little bit more bait over spots than I would normally. Just keep it going in. All the way under that arm. Plenty of bait in there. Next week. Back in the week, probably doing five or six kilo on that spot a week, and you're only allowed boilers on here, which is a bit of a pain because I'd probably use something like tigers normally when there's a lot of broom and tench because I struggle with them, but you can't use any particles on here. That should do me. There's the island swim. And two ears, 20 odd wraps.
That's the arm baited up over there. They're already rolling on it. Mad. No one on this lake. It's like it's like having a lake to yourself. <sighs> Loads of fish out here in the old grass, just sitting around. I think it's 25, 26 fish now. Um, summer, I've had at least five of them originals now. I'll have to have a count up. Yeah. One's just boshed out over where I put the bait already. They are absolutely on it. No one's fishing here. Let's get a few people on a week. It's absolute paradise. Surely, sooner or later, I'm going to bump into the big mirror or the big common. Just as pretty both sides, but I'm going to get her back and we'll have a look at the other one. Been baiting this spot for about two weeks. Come down today, lost one, had three in a day. It's absolutely kicking off. Absolute cracker. Well over 30 years old, this one. I remember it from back in the day. <laughs> Somewhere I've got a photo of this one, and he's about 11 pound. 29, absolutely spawned out. But uh, I couldn't be happier. <laughs> That's it. Come on, you. Give in. There's a bit of weed down there. Trying to keep him out of it. Might put barb hooks on. Oh, so much power. Come on, girl. Come on. It's gone off like a steam train. Oh, you're just nailed. Absolutely nailed. Size four, medium curve. In they go. Look 
that. <laughs> Oh, Carl. <laughs> I don't come much better than that. <laughs> yes. Well, the maddest session ever is just continuing. I've just had this, just under 28 pound. Well, I went photograph it, the rod's gone. I've got a fur in the net. It's been mental. Look at that. <laughs> what an unbelievable session. I was only talking about this fish the other day with someone. I may have caught it, I can't remember, but my mate definitely caught it in 1989. And I remember seeing it in the water in 1985 by feeding the fish in the old closed season. Because linears then weren't very common. And she's still going, she's only 18 pound. Look at that, come on. Yeah, come on. Let's have a look here. <laughs> Over 40 years old, this fish. I'm so pleased with it. <laughs> Let's get her back. Thank you, old friend. Well, let's talk about this session. I come down on the Sunday to pre bait. Got here at seven o'clock to beat the um, skiers because you can't come on when they're there. Put a whole bucket of bait into a swim. Got down on the Monday, 10 o'clock. Got my first bite at two o'clock after putting another four kilo bait in. It's now the second morning at 28 fish. That ain't normal on here. And I don't feel pretty normal at the moment. I'm absolutely blown to bits, knackered. Rod's been going in the night, in the morning. I've had loads of upper 20s and about 6.30s, lost a good one. But it's the power of pre-baiting, it's unbelievable, isn't it? And um, I've got about two hours left. Just had another one, about 28. Um, absolutely mental. So, just back in the spots. Fishing from the hotel bank today. Bring him in from the other side. So I've walked all the way around the lake, now baiting up off the walkway. I put a little bit of bait there. I've put more on the other side. The wind's blowing down the lake. That's where we fished last week and we had the 29 fish. And um, it's now blowing down here and they will be on this wind, I think. I heard there was not much out the weekend after that hit of fish. You can see there's a bit of weed around here, but just here, I've marked it with a red ball can. I've just put a load of bait in along this slab. I'm gonna bait boat across underneath these wires, up to here and drop it. There's plenty of bait in there. So, uh, yeah, let's see how we get on. I don't think there's anyone else on the whole lake. Um, it's looking well good. So I'm out on this walkway with a life jacket. A bit more on there. Get them mooching up and down. Around these boards. Got one night. So we've got one night here. Let's see what happens. Cannot wait to get a rod in. 
looking really good this is where we put all the bait when it was shut along this board since then i've not had the weather conditions to fish down here the wind's been going the other way and they definitely like the wind on here so it's been primed let's see what goes on back round to the swim now there's a few salt course no one on there today so you probably ain't seen the lake from this view we're always looking down at it because it's rare we're going to get a straight north wind so i just hope it pays off yeah look some basildon chav's lost his cap <laughs> nice cool droid cap classy we'll leave that there for him <laughs> got an 18 mil boilie on there i'll do that so i can change the hook so i can simply slip that back so it's an overhand knot on probably 12 inches of rock bottom brown and i do an overhand knot strip the coating away and i can simply change the hook by slipping up the kicker slipping off putting a new hook on which i've just done and i've got an 18 mil boilie and I've topped it with a tiger nut, which is a weird combination, but what that means is if an eel comes along and chews away the boilie, it won't like the tiger nut, so it leaves that sitting on the bottom, so at least I'm fishing. But yeah, cool. Get this back out. Rod's been out about half an hour and uh, we've hooked one already. Really hairy moment when underneath the walkway that's all floating and um, yeah, had to pull it back. Very shallow. Get in that net. Yes, in that net. Well, back down after last week's manic session and um, had a nightmare today. Long story short, thought I'd charge the bait boat battery and I hadn't. And I'm fishing an area where you have to have a bait boat because of the cables. Got here at 10, started fishing at 2. And uh, yeah, I think the rods are in the water about 35 minutes. It's gone up with this one. Nice big 20. Look at that absolutely wicked carp. Totally spawned out. Um, it's going down to one day a week fishing soon. The skis are out six days a week, so I might go somewhere else for a month and come back. It's a bit chillier. These are a bit fatter, but let's see what tonight brings, but one night. Common known as shoulders. Second biggest common in the lake. And this, this carp has been around years. Late 70s, early 80s. Been swimming around in this lake. And yeah, wasn't on my target list. It's, this, it's the forgotten child, this one. It's the middle sister. And uh, 
don't know why it weren't. Look at it. Massive overslung mouth. Absolutely wicked carp. <laughs> Over 40 years old. Tell you what, what a moment. <laughs> what a moment. one after spawning looking a bit shabby so I thought we'd have a quick look at her it's a double lin it's now mid 30 <laughs> look at that fish not shabby now all colours in wind and rain coming down the lake <laughs> absolutely first met this fish when it was 7 pound, then 26, then 32, and now we're mid 30, and that spans over about 30 years, so let's get back, beautiful carp. <laughs> Mad looking carp, look at that. Flopped over tail, big over slug mouth, 32 pounds and uh, I thought I was going to lose it, it found a snag, I let the line loose and after about 20 minutes it come out of it so all was good in the end. I've had a 35 pound mirror as well, but, uh, still got the day till about 4 o'clock, it's 9 in the morning, rain, wind, so I'm going to get him back, hopefully get another. Had this one, 31 pounds. Check him out. Oh, look at that. and back the other way. Very slippery this wood to watch me step. Having to stamp on the net, stop it blowing away.
good things come to an end. And that was the story of the ski lake. Retracing my steps when I was a young teenager and coming back and hoping to catch some of the fish that still swam around in here and I'm 50 years old. I didn't actually think there'd be as many left, especially like the little linear that I used to feed when I was a kid in the close season, it'd come up eating go-cat, still swimming around in here. And of course, the highlight of my season, the big mirror, a big plane flank, small fins. I come back and dreamed of catching her and she was well over 40 pounds, so I was so happy with the result. It's been really good, it's brought back a lot of memories, but it is time to move on. I hope that you liked my blog and I hope that you watch the next one. It's now mid-December and I'm off to fish somewhere else, but it's been absolutely brilliant.